settled. You've already got it. This is an old teaching of mine, and I've listened to some of this teaching in preparation of this series, and it's really good, but, you know, I've got new illustrations. So really, if you get the DVDs and the CDs, you'll be getting this teaching from uh, a perspective of like 20 years difference between the teachings. The truth is still the same, but it'll have some new uh, testimonies and things in there. And so together they make a better uh, presentation, I think, than either one of them would by themselves. But anyway, this is a powerful truth that I have been sharing with people for a long time, and we've seen a lot of people's lives change. And at the end of yesterday's program, I was talking about how hard it is for people to get this because this is a paradigm shift. Matter of fact, I had a man walk up one time and he said, this isn't a paradigm shift. This is a paraquarter shift. In other words, just talking about this is huge. It is completely opposite the way that most people relate to God. Most people believe that God can do things, but that He has done nothing and that we've got to petition Him. And depending on how desperate we are, how, how serious we are, how, all of these things, God might or might not respond to us. But what I'm teaching is that God's already done it. You've already got it. Everything that you are asking God for, God has already accomplished. And if you are born again, He has already placed the power to produce the miracle that you need on the inside of you. So you don't need to ask God for it. What you've got to do is believe what He has already done. That's huge. That is a major difference. And I was sharing at the end of yesterday's program that I've gone to, in a sense, tricking people to try and get my point across. Just, you know, out of, I've, I've tried everything I can and I'm just trying to get people to recognize that the way we're approaching God isn't the way that the Scripture teaches. So there was this one instance where the people had been singing this song, I'm desperate for you, and I talked about that, gave the definitions of desperate yesterday, hopeless, without any hope, despair, forlorn, and on and on. And this is the way that most people approach God about, oh God, here's what I've got and it's nothing. I have people come up to me all of the time and they say, in a, they may, you know, phrase it differently, but this is the point that they're getting across, is that I have nothing, I can do nothing, I'm nothing. Would you please pray that God would do something in my life and help me over this situation? Well, that's approaching God in total unbelief because the Bible says, that we have everything in Christ Jesus, that He's already abounded towards us with all of these things, and yet you're coming saying, no, I don't have anything, because you can't see it, because the doctor can't find it in their test or the banker can't see it. But see, there's a spiritual part of you. If you understand that teaching, spirit, soul, and body, which is what unlocked my whole understanding of the Word, then you can understand that there are things in the spiritual realm, not only out there, but in here, inside of you, that you have the power of God, the same power that raised Christ from the dead living on the inside of you. You've already got healing. You've already got prosperity. You've already got love, joy, and peace. Galatians 5, and 23, all the fruit of the Spirit. You've already got everything. You don't need God to give you something. What you need is a revelation of what you've already got. You've already got it. That's what this teaching is about. It's got a picture of a dog chasing his tail. So anyway, this church that I was in, they'd just been singing, I'm desperate for you. And it was like, oh God, I have nothing. I can do nothing, but we know that you can do all things. And they were just praying and crying. And, and anyway, I'm not sure that this is the way I should have done it. I'm just telling you what I did. I got up and I said, how many of you are desperate for God? I mean, you're hopeless and... Man, people were just shouting and screaming, even the pastor of the church, yes, how many of you are just, you know, you're without hope and yes. And they were talking about, I'm so hungry for God. And then I said, let's turn over to John chapter 6. And I read some of these verses for time's sake. I'm not going to read all of them, but the people said, show us something. Do a miracle to prove who you are. They said, Moses gave us manna. Can you give us manna? And Jesus said, I am the manna. I am the bread sent down from heaven. And they were saying in John 6, 34, they said, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And then Jesus said unto them, 
I AM THE BREAD OF LIFE. HE THAT COMETH TO ME SHALL NEVER HUNGER, AND HE THAT BELIEVETH ON ME SHALL NEVER THIRST. AND I HAD JUST ASKED THESE PEOPLE, HOW MANY OF YOU ARE HUNGRY? HOW MANY OF YOU ARE THIRSTY? AND THEY WERE ALL, YAY! THE PREACHER WAS SCREAMING RIGHT ALONG WITH THE REST OF THEM. AND I SAID, HOW DO YOU FIT WITH THIS VERSE WHERE IF YOU COME TO THE LORD, YOU'LL NEVER HUNGER AND YOU'LL NEVER THIRST? AND BOY, I MEAN, IT GOT AS QUIET YOU COULD HAVE HEARD A PIN DROP IN THAT PLACE. PEOPLE WERE SHOCKED. AND I SAID, HOW DOES THIS FIT? ALSO, LOOK OVER HERE WHERE JESUS TALKED TO THE WOMAN AT THE WELL, AND IN VERSE 13, JESUS ANSWERED AND SAID UNTO HER, WHOSOEVER DRINKETH OF THIS WATER SHALL THIRST AGAIN, BUT WHOSOEVER DRINKETH OF THE WATER THAT I SHALL GIVE HIM SHALL NEVER THIRST, BUT THE WATER THAT I SHALL GIVE HIM SHALL BE IN HIM A WELL OF WATER SPRINGING UP UNTO EVERLASTING LIFE. DESCRIBING AN ARTESIAN WELL WHERE YOU DON'T HAVE TO PUMP IT AND DRAW IT OUT. IT JUST BUBBLES UP. IT OVERFLOWS. THIS IS WHAT JESUS WAS SAYING, THAT IF YOU DRINK OF THIS WATER, YOU'LL NEVER THIRST AGAIN. OVER IN CHAPTER 6, IF YOU EAT OF HIM, THE MANNA, YOU WILL NEVER HUNGER AGAIN AND YOU WILL NEVER THIRST AGAIN. AND YET CHRISTIANS ARE JUST CONSTANTLY TALKING ABOUT HOW HUNGRY AND HOW THIRSTY THEY ARE, HOW DESPERATE THEY ARE. OH, GOD, I NEED YOU. AND DON'T MISUNDERSTAND WHAT I'M SAYING. I USE THE WORD THAT WE NEED TO HUNGER FOR GOD IN THE SENSE THAT IT'S SAYING WE NEED TO HAVE AN APPETITE. WE NEED TO DESIRE THE THINGS OF GOD. YES, I BELIEVE IN THAT. BUT TO TALK ABOUT THAT YOU'RE JUST FAMISHED, THAT YOU'RE HUNGRY, I LOOK AT IT LIKE IF YOU WERE SITTING AT A TABLE WHERE THERE WAS AN ABSOLUTE FEAST PROVIDED FOR YOU, AND ALL YOU DID WAS TALKING ABOUT, OH, I'M HUNGRY, OH, I'M SO HUNGRY. I WISHED I HAD SOMETHING TO EAT. YOU KNOW, I WOULD JUST SIT THERE AND SAY, WELL, LOOK, LOOK WHAT YOU'VE GOT. IF YOU'RE HUNGRY, EAT. DON'T TALK ABOUT YOUR HUNGER. JUST EAT. SATISFY YOUR HUNGER. AND SEE, THIS IS WHAT I SEE CHRISTIANS DOING. THEY WILL GLORIFY THAT, OH, GOD, I'M HUNGRY FOR YOU. OH, GOD, I'M THIRSTY FOR YOU. BUT THEY DON'T EAT AND THEY DON'T DRINK. JESUS SAID THAT IF YOU CAME TO HIM, YOU SHOULD NEVER BE HUNGRY. YOU SHOULD NEVER BE THIRSTY AGAIN. NOW, YOU SHOULD HUNGER FOR THINGS OF GOD IN THE SENSE THAT YOU DESIRE THEM AND THAT YOU LONG FOR, BUT YOU SHOULDN'T BE, YOU SHOULDN'T BE FAMISHED BECAUSE GOD HAS SET A FEAST. AND ONE OF THE THINGS I'M GOING TO TEACH AS WE GO THROUGH THIS IS THAT GOD HAS ALREADY DONE EVERYTHING. THE LOVE, THE JOY, THE PEACE, LONG-SUFFERING, GENTLENESS, GOODNESS, FAITH, MEEKNESS, AND TEMPERANCE THAT GALATIANS 5, 22 AND 23 SAYS YOU ALREADY HAVE. IT'S ALREADY IN HERE. AND SO IF YOU DON'T FEEL THE LOVE OF GOD, YOU DON'T SAY, OH, GOD, POUR YOUR LOVE OUT IN MY LIFE. SEE, THAT'S UNBELIEF. YOU ARE DOUBTING WHAT THE WORD SAYS ABOUT GOD'S LOVE ALREADY BEING COMMENDED UNTO YOU. ROMANS CHAPTER 5, VERSE 8. YOU ARE, BECAUSE YOU DON'T FEEL IT, BECAUSE YOU DON'T SEE IT, BECAUSE THERE ISN'T ANYTHING TANGIBLE, YOU ARE JUST CARNAL. YOU'RE OPERATING IN THE PHYSICAL REALM, AND YOU'RE SAYING, OH, GOD, DO SOMETHING, BECAUSE YOU CAN'T SEE IT. YOU DON'T BELIEVE HE'S DONE ANYTHING. GOD IS A SPIRIT. JOHN 4, 24 SAYS, HE HAS MOVED IN THE SPIRIT REALM, AND IN THE SPIRIT REALM, THE LOVE OF GOD HAS BEEN POURED OUT IN YOUR HEART. YOUR BORN-AGAIN SPIRIT IS ABSOLUTELY CHOCK FULL OF THE LOVE OF GOD. YOU DON'T NEED GOD TO LOVE YOU. WHAT YOU NEED TO DO IS TO DRAW OUT THE LOVE THAT IS IN THERE. AND HOW DO YOU DO THAT? BY FIRST OF ALL, ACKNOWLEDGING THAT IT'S THERE. QUIT ASKING GOD, OH, GOD, POUR YOUR LOVE OUT IN MY LIFE. I HAVE PEOPLE COME TO ME ALL THE TIME AND SAY, WOULD YOU JUST PLEASE PRAY THAT GOD WOULD, would SHOW ME HIS LOVE, THAT HE WOULD POUR HIS LOVE OUT IN MY LIFE? AND I SAY, NO. BECAUSE, SEE, that, THAT PRAYER IS IMPLYING THAT UNTIL YOU FEEL SOMETHING, GOD HASN'T DONE ANYTHING. THAT'S WRONG THINKING. GOD HAS ALREADY COMMENDED HIS LOVE TOWARDS YOU. YOU HAVE HIS LOVE IN YOU IN ABUNDANCE. AND SO INSTEAD OF SAYING, OH, GOD, YOU HAVEN'T DONE ANYTHING, LET ME DO SOMETHING SO I CAN FEEL IT. NO, GOD HAS DONE HIS PART. WHAT YOU SHOULD DO IS SAY, FATHER, I KNOW YOUR WORD SAYS THAT YOU'VE ALREADY POURED YOUR LOVE OUT IN MY LIFE. YOU'VE ALREADY COMMENDED YOUR LOVE TOWARDS ME. I'VE GOT THE FRUIT OF THE SPIRIT. LOVE IS HERE ALL OF THE TIME, BUT I'M NOT FEELING YOUR LOVE. AND IT'S BECAUSE YOU'RE TUNED TO THE WRONG STATION. YOU AREN'T FOCUSED ON GOD. AND SO IT WOULD BE APPROPRIATE FOR YOU TO SAY, FATHER, I KNOW THE LOVE IS HERE, BUT I AM NOT RECEIVING IT. SHOW ME WHAT I'M DOING WRONG. HELP ME TO YIELD TO YOUR LOVE. HELP ME TO DRAW OUT TO EXPERIENCE. HELP ME TO WALK IN THE LOVE OF GOD. THAT'S OKAY. THAT'S A GOOD PRAYER. BUT TO SAY, GOD, 
DO SOMETHING. LOVE ME. YOU ARE, IN A SENSE, QUESTIONING WHAT THE WORD OF GOD SAYS, THAT HE'S ALREADY POURED OUT HIS LOVE. LOOK AT IT THIS WAY. IF YOU COULD IMAGINE, YOU KNOW, A TELEVISION SET, MOST OF YOU ARE PROBABLY WATCHING THIS BROADCAST OVER YOUR TELEVISION SET. SOME OF YOU MIGHT BE WATCHING IT ON YOUR MOBILE DEVICES OR WHATEVER. BUT DID YOU KNOW THAT THERE ARE SIGNALS, THERE ARE, WHEREVER YOU ARE, THERE ARE TELEVISION AND RADIO SIGNALS ALL AROUND YOU. AND RIGHT NOW, YOU'RE TUNED IN TO THIS FREQUENCY AND YOU'RE WATCHING THIS PROGRAM. BUT DID YOU KNOW, EVEN IF YOUR SET WAS TURNED OFF, THE TELEVISION STATION, THE NETWORK IS STILL BROADCASTING THE SIGNAL. SOME OF YOU ARE GETTING IT BY SATELLITE, SOME OF YOU BY CABLE, SOME OF YOU ALL DIFFERENT KINDS OF WAYS. BUT THE BROADCAST IS ALWAYS THERE. IF YOUR TELEVISION SET WAS TURNED OFF, THIS BROADCAST WOULDN'T STOP. IT WOULD STILL BE BROADCASTING. YOU JUST WOULDN'T BE RECEIVING IT BECAUSE YOUR RECEIVER ISN'T TURNED ON. AND THESE SIGNALS ARE ALWAYS THERE, BUT DID YOU KNOW THAT YOU COULD TUNE TO A DIFFERENT STATION? YOU COULD TUNE TO A DIFFERENT FREQUENCY, AND THIS FREQUENCY, THIS STATION, THIS BROADCAST IS GOING TO STILL CONTINUE ON, BUT YOU WON'T BE RECEIVING IT BECAUSE YOU'RE TUNED INTO SOMETHING DIFFERENT. SEE, THIS IS THE WAY THAT GOD IS. GOD IS ALWAYS, ALWAYS ON. GOD NEVER HAS A FAILURE WITH HIS TRANSMITTER. IT NEVER BLOWS OUT. THERE IS NEVER A POWER SHORTAGE. THERE IS NEVER ANYTHING THAT STOPS GOD FROM TRANSMITTING HIS LOVE AND HIS VICTORY AND HIS POWER TOWARDS YOU. BUT YOU MAY NOT BE RECEIVING IT BECAUSE YOUR RECEIVER ISN'T TURNED ON AND TUNED IN. OR MAYBE YOUR RECEIVER IS TURNED ON, BUT IT'S TUNED IN TO A DIFFERENT FREQUENCY. IF YOU AREN'T FEELING THE LOVE OF GOD, IT'S NOT BECAUSE GOD'S NOT TRANSMITTING THAT LOVE. IT'S BECAUSE YOU ARE TUNED IN TO SOMETHING ELSE. YOU'VE BEEN LOOKING AT THE BAD NEWS. YOU'VE BEEN LOOKING AT THE 10 SPIES NETWORK THAT'S REPORTING ALL OF THE BAD STUFF AND TALKING ABOUT EVERYTHING TERRIBLE THAT'S HAPPENING IN OUR WORLD. AND IF YOU AREN'T DISCOURAGED, IT'S BECAUSE YOU AREN'T PAYING ATTENTION TO ALL OF THE JUNK THAT'S GOING ON. THERE'S A LOT OF BAD THINGS HAPPENING. BUT IF YOU WOULD TUNE IN TO GOD'S FREQUENCY, IF YOU WOULD LET THE WORD OF GOD REVEAL HIS TRUTH AND KEEP YOUR MIND STAYED UPON HIM, ISAIAH 26, 3 SAYS, THE LORD WILL KEEP HIM IN PERFECT PEACE WHOSE MIND IS STAYED UPON HIM BECAUSE HE TRUSTS IN HIM. SO IF YOU WERE TUNED IN TO GOD'S FREQUENCY, IT'S NOT GOD WHO'S NOT TRANSMITTING, IT'S US WHO AREN'T RECEIVING. YOU KNOW, IF YOU WERE WATCHING THE TELEVISION SET AND ALL OF A SUDDEN, IF IT JUST WENT BLANK, DID YOU KNOW MOST OF YOU WOULD NOT IMMEDIATELY CALL THE TELEVISION STATION AND SAY, WHY DID YOU QUIT TRANSMITTING? YOU, you HAVE MORE FAITH IN THE SECULAR, um, YOU KNOW, TELEVISION STATIONS THAN MOST OF US HAVE IN GOD. IF YOUR TELEVISION Im IMMEDIATELY JUST WENT BLANK, YOU WOULD THINK EITHER IT'S UNPLUGGED OR POSSIBLY, YOU KNOW, YOUR a TELEVISION SET FAILED IN SOME WAY OR ANOTHER, OR YOUR SATELLITE RECEIVER QUIT WORKING. MAYBE THERE WAS, YOU KNOW, INTERFERENCE OR, YOU KNOW, YOU WOULD CHECK ALL OF THESE OTHER THINGS, AND IT WOULD BE A LAST RESULT OR A LAST RESORT BEFORE YOU CALLED THE TELEVISION STATION AND SAY, WHY DID YOU QUIT TRANSMITTING? BUT WITH GOD, SEE, IMMEDIATELY, IF WE DON'T FEEL THE LOVE OF GOD, IF WE DON'T SEE HEALING, IF WE DON'T SEE PROSPERITY, WE JUST SAY, GOD, WHY DID YOU NOT DO THIS? IT'S NEVER GOD THAT FAILS TO TRANSMIT. IT'S ALWAYS US THAT FAILS TO RECEIVE. MAN, THESE ARE POWERFUL STATEMENTS. AND SO GO BACK AGAIN TO JOHN 6, 35, JOHN CHAPTER 4, VERSES 13 AND 14, THAT IF YOU BELIEVE ON HIM, YOU'LL NEVER HUNGER. YOU'LL NEVER THIRST AGAIN. AND SO IF YOU'RE SAYING, OH, I JUST NEED YOU SO MUCH, GOD, WELL, HE'S ALREADY DONE HIS PART. IF YOU NEED HIM, QUIT, QUIT TALKING ABOUT HOW MUCH YOU NEED HIM. QUIT BEGGING GOD TO DO SOMETHING. DIG INTO THE WORD AND START EATING. START PARTAKING. START DRINKING OF THIS LIVING WATER. YOU KNOW, I DON'T DENY THAT WE AS FALLEN HUMAN BEINGS, EVEN THOUGH WE'VE BEEN BORN AGAIN, WE STILL HAVE a body that is susceptible to things. We still have a soulish realm that is susceptible to fears and things like that. I don't deny that that stuff happens. You know, I'm not saying that I never have a negative thought or a ne negative feeling, but I am saying that when I begin to not feel the love of God and it just doesn't 
YOU KNOW, I DON'T FEEL LIKE GOD LOVES ME. I DON'T FEEL LIKE GOD'S WITH ME. THERE ARE TIMES THAT I HAVE THOSE THOUGHTS AND THOSE FEELINGS COME TO ME, BUT I KNOW WHAT THE WORD SAYS, THAT HE WILL NEVER LEAVE ME NOR FORSAKE ME. I KNOW HE'S ALREADY COMMENDED HIS LOVE TOWARDS ME, AND I KNOW THAT IF I AM NOT FEELING THE WAY THAT I SHOULD BE, IT'S NOT GOD WHO HAS QUIT GIVING. IT WAS ME THAT QUIT RECEIVING. I'VE PROBABLY BEEN TUNED IN TO A DIFFERENT FREQUENCY, LISTENING AND WATCHING SOME THINGS THAT I SHOULDN'T DO, AND I KNOW WHAT TO DO, SO I JUST, YOU KNOW, I MAY SPEND A DAY FASTING OR PRAYING OR JUST SPEND, a, YOU KNOW, HOURS PUTTING MY MIND BACK ON THE WORD OF GOD AND LETTING MY ATTENTION BE ONCE AGAIN DIRECTED TOWARDS GOD'S FREQUENCY. AND SO I DON'T DENY THAT THERE ARE TIMES THAT SOME NEGATIVE THINGS COME MY WAY, BUT INSTEAD OF ME JUST SAYING, WELL, GOD, THIS IS THE WAY IT IS, WHAT HAPPENED? WHY DID YOU TURN OFF THE SIGNAL? WHY DID YOU QUIT BROADCASTING? I NEVER DO THAT. I SAY, FATHER, I KNOW THAT IF SOMETHING ISN'T WORKING, IT'S NOT YOU THAT IS UNFAITHFUL. IT WAS ME THAT WAS UNFAITHFUL. SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER, I'VE LET MY ATTENTION BE MOVED OFF OF YOU. AGAIN, I GO BACK TO ISAIAH 26, 3. THE LORD WILL KEEP HIM IN PERFECT PEACE WHOSE MIND HAS STAYED UPON HIM BECAUSE HE TRUSTED IN HIM. IF I DON'T HAVE PERFECT PEACE, IT'S NOT BECAUSE GOD QUIT RELEASING PEACE. IT'S NOT BECAUSE I NO LONGER HAVE PEACE IN MY SPIRIT. GALATIANS 5, 22 SAYS I DO. I KNOW I'VE GOT IT. IF I'M NOT EXPERIENCING IT, IF I CAN'T PERCEIVE IT, IT'S NOT GOD WHO DIDN'T GIVE. IT WAS ME THAT QUIT RECEIVING. SO I START WORKING ON MY RECEIVER. AND I START FOCUSING, REFOCUSING MY ATTENTION BACK ON THE THINGS OF GOD AND PRAYING AND REMINDING MYSELF OF THE TRUTHS OF GOD'S WORD AND SPEAKING IT FORTH. I MAY GO GET PRAISE AND WORSHIP MUSIC THAT, YOU KNOW, PUTS MY ATTENTION ON WHAT GOD HAS DONE INSTEAD OF ALL OF THE NEGATIVE THINGS THAT I'M SEEING. AND I START WORKING ON MY RECEIVER. THIS IS HUGE WHAT I'M SAYING. AND I KNOW THAT I KNOW THAT THERE'S PEOPLE THAT JUST, THEY FLIP THROUGH THE DIAL. SOME OF YOU ARE ONLY GETTING A SMALL PORTION OF THIS. YOU MAY NOT HAVE THE CONTEXT. YOU MAY NOT REALIZE HOW IMPORTANT IT IS WHAT I'M SAYING. BUT THIS IS HUGE. INSTEAD OF BELIEVING THAT GOD CAN, BUT THAT HE HASN'T, IT IS SO MUCH DIFFERENT TO BELIEVE THAT, GOD, YOU'VE ALREADY DONE IT. IF I'M NOT SEEING THE THINGS THAT YOUR WORD PROMISES, IT'S NOT YOU THAT HASN'T GIVEN. IT'S ME THAT SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER I'M NOT RECEIVING. AND YOU IMMEDIATELY GO TO WORKING ON YOURSELF INSTEAD OF WORKING ON GOD AND TRYING TO GET GOD TO DO SOMETHING. YOU KNOW, I WAS IN THE MILITARY, AND SOME OF YOU MAY NOT RELATE TO THIS, BUT THOSE OF YOU THAT HAVE BEEN IN THE MILITARY, I THINK, CAN, can RELATE TO IT. BUT WHEN I WAS IN VIETNAM, YOU COULD HAVE A, YOU KNOW, A MACHINE GUN EMPLACEMENT OR SOMETHING ON THE TOP OF A HILL, AND FIVE PEOPLE COULD HOLD OFF A HUNDRED PEOPLE ATTACKING THEM BECAUSE THEY WERE IN A DEFENSIVE POSITION AND PROTECTING WHAT THEY HAD. BUT WHEN YOU ARE TRYING TO TAKE SOMETHING THAT YOU DON'T HAVE, IT COULD TAKE A HUNDRED PEOPLE TO OVERCOME FIVE PEOPLE THAT HAD A DEFENSIVE POSITION. THE POINT THAT I'M MAKING IS IT'S HARDER TO GO GET SOMETHING THAT YOU DON'T HAVE THAN IT IS TO SIMPLY RELEASE SOMETHING THAT YOU DO HAVE. AND SO YOU NEED TO GET THIS ATTITUDE. WHEN IT COMES TO LIKE HEALING, INSTEAD OF LOOKING OVER THERE, YOU KNOW, 10 FEET FROM HERE, THERE IS HEALING. I BELIEVE I AM GOING TO MAKE IT. I AM GOING TO BE HEALED. SOME PEOPLE will THINK, WELL, THAT'S A GREAT STATEMENT, BUT YOU KNOW, IT'S GOT AN ELEMENT OF DOUBT IN IT BECAUSE YOU AREN'T THERE YET. HOW DO YOU KNOW YOU'LL MAKE IT 10 FEET? SOMEBODY COULD TACKLE YOU. SOMETHING COULD HAPPEN. Uh, YOU MIGHT NOT MAKE IT, BUT IF YOU SAY, RIGHT HERE IS HEALING, HOW CAN YOU DOUBT THAT YOU'LL GET WHAT YOU ALREADY HAVE? HERE'S ANOTHER EXAMPLE THAT, YOU KNOW, WHEN I FIRST GOT TURNED ON TO THE LORD, uh, I WENT TO VIETNAM. I TOOK MY BIBLE WITH ME. MAN, I STUDIED. I HAD EVERY PAGE MARKED UP. I HAD MY ENTIRE BIBLE NEARLY SCOTCH TAPED TOGETHER BECAUSE I'D WRITTEN ON IT. IT WAS TORN. THERE WERE PAGES THAT HAD FALLEN OUT. ENTIRE CHAPTERS OF THE BIBLE WERE GONE. AND WHEN I WAS PASTORING MY FIRST LITTLE CHURCH IN SEAGALVILLE, TEXAS, I DIDN'T EVEN HAVE A WHOLE BIBLE. AND ANYWAY, WE WERE EXPERIENCING A LOT OF POVERTY, WHICH WASN'T GOD'S FAULT. IT WAS MY FAULT. I WAS DOING THINGS WRONG. I WAS TAUGHT WRONG ON A LOT OF THINGS. SO I'M NOT BLAMING GOD. BUT NONETHELESS, JAMIE AND I WOULD GO WEEKS AT A TIME WITHOUT EATING. I MEAN, IT WAS CRITICAL. AND, and SO HERE I WAS, PASTORING A CHURCH, AND I DIDN'T EVEN HAVE A WHOLE BIBLE. AND I FINALLY, JUST ONE DAY, 
I made a decision that, you know, somewhere, sometime, I've got to start seeing these things that I'm preaching about come to pass. It can't just be theory. I've got to have some proof of it. And I just focused on that Bible. And I said, I'm going to buy me a new Bible. And some of you, you can't relate to this because, you know, when you say that you don't have any money, you may have $1,000 in the bank, but you may have $2,000 worth of bills, and you're talking about how broke you are. But you've got money. When I said that Jamie and I were broke, we didn't have anything. I mean, we had Zippo, Zero, Zilch, Nada. We didn't have any change. And so anyway, when I decided that I was going to believe God for enough money to buy a Bible, did you know it took me nearly six months to believe for an extra $25 so I could go buy a Bible? And some of you can't relate to that, but I'm saying that's how poor we were. We were so poor, we couldn't pay attention. We were struggling. And during those six months, I had just drawn a line in the sand, and I said, I'm going to live or die right here. Either faith works, and I'm going to see faith produce a new Bible, or I'm just going to quit. What good am I? What? How can I help anybody else get born again, healed, delivered, if I can't even believe for enough money to get a Bible? So I just made this an issue. And anyway, during those six months, there was probably not any waking moment that I didn't have some fear or worry about, is it going to work? Will I be able to get it? And I had Satan condemning me with, what kind of a man of God are you? You don't even have a whole Bible. But eventually, I got that 25 bucks. I went and bought a Bible. I had my name engraved on it. And when I walked out of that bookstore and I had my Bible under my arm, I never doubted again that I would get it. Now, remember, for six months, I'd been fighting doubt nearly every waking moment. But as soon as I had it, I quit doubting that I'd get it. And I know some of you are thinking, well, of course. Why would you doubt that you're going to get it if you've got it? That's my point. The reason some of you are saying, I believe I'm healed, but you don't really believe you are healed. You believe you are going to be healed, and because of it, you're doubting. But if you could see that I've already got it, I've already got the same power in me that raised Christ from the dead, you would quit dealing with the doubt if you saw it as an accomplished fact instead of something that could happen in the future. Man, I'm out of time, and I'm just really getting to where I can say some good things. Please listen to our announcer as he gives you this information about how to get this teaching in book form, study guide, DVDs, and CDs, and I think that this could really, really minister to you. So listen to our announcer, and please call or write today. You already got it. Allow me to uh, understand, to understand that I already, I already got healing. To see what my identity was in Christ was just um, life-changing. It was just totally life-changing for me. I didn't know that the power of God was already in me. So to me, there was a tremendous discovery. I didn't know how little I knew about the Bible, but thank the Lord for Andrew Womack that I already got it, honey. Andrew's complete teaching titled, You've Already Got It, is available in either a CD or DVD album made from our daily television broadcast. It's also available in a book and study guide in English or Spanish. Each of these products is available for a gift of any amount. Or you can get them in the You've Already Got It package. This package includes the book, the study guide, and your choice of either the CD or DVD album. This package has a catalog value of $90, but you can get it today for only $60. Andrew's book, You've Already Got It, is available for a gift of any amount when you write or call. We encourage everyone to give because there's a blessing in giving. But if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will provide this book to you free of charge. You can become a Grace Partner or order resources through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. Or you can call our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open Monday through Friday, 24 hours a day, and Saturday and Sunday from 7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Mountain Time. 
You say, in the name of Jesus, I'm not going by what I see. I go by what the Word of God says. There's more than just this physical realm. There's also a spiritual realm. I don't care what this looks like. I know what God's Word says. I was told that I would always have severe asthma and food allergies. I was born missing the left side of my heart with a very small chance of living. The doctors indicated that I had a permanent brain injury and that I would never function in mainstream society again. I'm Tim McDermott and my brother and I were told that we would never recover from autism. From a young age, I had several diagnoses, including Asperger's syndrome, disexecutive syndrome, and communication disorders. My brother James was diagnosed with autism before he turned three. For years, it seemed like we would never be normal, but then my parents stumbled across the healing journey of Hannah Terides. A few weeks later, we went to Andrew's free Grace and Faith conference, where we were healed of autism. Today, 10 years later, I'm still walking in my complete healing, and I am not alone. I haven't needed my inhaler in years, and now I eat whatever I want. My heart grew back its missing piece.